Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. What's going on, folks? Big Paul here today with freshly minted IFBB Pro, Chris Spafford. What's going on, dude? How's it going, man? I am great, man. You looked fantastic at the show. I, I like I it, you you. It was pretty clear to me that you, you were in the number one spot when I when I saw you out there, man. We were, we were talking about before this how you can't tell from looking at pictures who should be in first or second place, but when you're there, it's pretty pretty apparent. Clear, yeah. No, I appreciate that, man. It's conditioning conditioning over everything. You know, I I know I'm never going to be the biggest guy out there, and I'm not. I don't bring all the size with it, but I sacrifice a little bit of size for the conditioning. I believe in conditioning wind shows, bottom line. So unless you're a big guy, then <laughs> then it's being the biggest yeah, guy. Be <laughs> yeah. But that's, yeah, I mean that's always my little thing too. I always say we can all get big. Everybody can get big. We can all eat and get huge, but can you be disciplined in diet? Like the, the conditioning and diet is what pushes you above and beyond. That's number one thing in this sport for sure. Yeah, I mean conditioning has always kind of been my thing too. I mean, when I, I don't ever see these people that like half ass prep man you know and and like i i like i get you know i shouldn't talk about my clients but i get clients sometimes i'm like dude what are you doing <laughs> yeah it's, well i mean if you're going to commit to something do it I, i'm that guy that i if i if i say i'm going to do something i'm going to get it done and that was kind of the lineup of what we wanted to do i had to do a small local show here um, i live in wisconsin i live in hudson or river falls wisconsin i own a gym in hudson wisconsin and we just kind of, I turned it up and just said, you know what? I want, I want to go get my pro card. Like it's time to do it. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been doing multiple shows. So we buckled down, figured out a show two weeks prior to uh, nationals, won uh, Bruce city in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. So I won the overall that punched me the ticket to nationals. And I was just on, I was, I was very driven and focused and I had one mission and it was to go to Pittsburgh, get my pro card and get the heck out of there. It's so, nice when things click like that, man. It was, it, it's good, but I, I just know that in my head I was there and nothing was going to stop me and I just wasn't going to allow anything to get in my way. Well, this, this is where you were at. Shredded glutes, man. Shredded glutes. Like we kind of discussed earlier, that was, <laughs> that was my biggest thing is if you turn around and, and you've got shredded glutes, you're going to win something. But There isn't an ounce of fat on you, man. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I try to, I try to hold and I like that lean lifestyle too. So I stay, I'm, I'm around 10% or under year round. I'm not that guy that gets sloppy. I don't like the word bulk. I, I just don't do that. Like we discussed earlier too. I just, I don't eat a lot of bad foods. It's all about digestion for me. So it's all foods that whether I'm going to grow or if I'm cutting, I'm having the same foods just in different qualities for sure. So, yeah. I learned that lesson the hard way, man. I've let myself get fat before and it's just, in the off season, you just got to suffer more on prep. It's just more work on prep. If you, if you let yourself get fat in the off season. And if you're eating the clean foods and just more of it, when you pull it back, it's not as bad. And, and as you know, when you get deep into, into any preps, your taste buds change, your yeah. taste buds change a ton because even just after this show and I've been into a, ch a cookie and I was like, this tastes horrible. Because the, the amount, it tasted so artificial with the sugar and it just blasted me. And I was just like, man, this is terrible. Because I was used to 99 turkey, asparagus, apple cider vinegar. You know, these are some of the, the do you, things I do to cut down. Do you get any weird cravings on prep, man? I, like, I, I, like diet, I never fucking drink diet sodas, but man, diet sodas, I, I go crazy on the diet sodas yeah, on prep I, sometimes. I, it's usually about four weeks out is when I start to get the cravings. I'm not a sugar guy. I'm not a sweets guy, but for some reason, cookies and muffins always just all of a sudden just creep in every single prep. It doesn't matter how many times I've prepped. It's those foods. And then all of a sudden I start watching YouTube videos of people eating food as crazy as that sounds. And it's like, I feel like I'm eating through them and it's helping me on my prep. And <laughs> I know. I, that, I call that it, crazy. I call it food porn. Everybody mm -hmm. does that, man. I'll, I'll sit oh, yeah. and watch cooking videos on YouTube sometimes. Yes. My wife and I just back and forth, send Instagram food to each other. Just, oh my God, <laughs> make that. we're just big foodies when it comes to that. Man, you, you were shredded here, dude. Holy crap. We, we pulled down pretty good. Um, like I said, um, AJ and I have been working together for three shows. So I believe this was our second one that we pulled off. We kind of discussed one got shut down during COVID. 
but we, we just click. I'm, I'm really anal and detailed doing this myself for a living. I wanted to make sure that I had a coach that is on the same level as me. And that has that same understanding because you have to be able to click on that level or it's not going to work. Especially yeah. If you're not, yeah. Especially if you're not doing anything in person and it's all online, you have to make sure to have a crazy good connection. Yeah. Justin, my coach said he used to coach AJ. He said he's like the hardest working guy he'd ever, ever coached. It's, it's incredible. You know, the light, the, he's just an all around good dude, a good dad, a, yeah, good, a good friend. You know, like I said, we've never even actually met one-on-one in person. But he feel I feel like he's one of my best friends. Just the way that we t- we talk almost every day, and we just collaborate. He's he's another brother from another mother, is what I always yeah, say. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about him. He he um, he has a sterling reputation, and my God, man, he gets people peeled. I don't I don't I think I I don't I know I, I I mean I've seen some of his protocols. I know what he does at the end, but it's you know it's nothing crazy different nothing than from crazy. everybody else. The one thing he 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 really strives himself on too is finding the people that are going to be workhorses, the people that are going to put their seatbelt on and just go. You know, you're not going to pick up these lazy slacking clients that don't make you look good as a coach for one, and then just the work ethic isn't there. You don't want to work with somebody like that. Yeah. One thing that AJ does with me is he he slows me down. I'm so hyperactive and I've got so much ADD and ABC. I've got all those letters I always say, and. I'll get 20,000 steps every day. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to go to bed when I started this prep until I get 20,000 steps a day. That sounds crazy. That sounds nuts. But it was a goal I set in my head and I made it happen. And like I talked about, I hold a lot of my weight in my glutes. So I knew I had to lean those guys out. I actually stopped training legs a month before my show. I never touched them for a month. That's wild. To completely saturate them out. And the one thing is I, I usually do like two weeks but I wanted to put my, I was getting digger, just deeper and deeper and deeper digs into my quads when I wasn't touching them. And as soon as I would do a squat or stand up from the toilet and I got blood in there, I'd lose some lines. And I'm like, I got to let, I got to rest these guys. And I'm kind of the leg guy. I love training legs. It's my favorite body part to train, but I just knew I had to deteriorate some of that size as, as you know, it sucks because you're not, you don't feel as tight. You don't feel as full. Your glycogen is shot. You feel like a, a wimp. You feel like you got strings hanging out your shorts. You're like, what happened to my legs? Yeah, it's a mind fuck. Yes, but but it worked. And I pushed it that much farther and, and, it, and it worked that way. And making sure that I got those steps in no matter what. It was just accountability. You have to stay accountable. And that's my favorite part of AJ is we stayed extremely accountable to each other. And what I mean by he was slowing me down is he tell me to sit still, take a nap, relax, stop getting up at four in the morning and doing your cardio and yoga and all this stuff. I have a whole protocol that's insane, but that's just part of me as a person. I know what I need to do to get to that level. And I wasn't like like Pittsburgh without a pro card. You sound like, you sound like me. I, I've made that mistake past and past on preps. Like, you know, Justin will tell me 30 minutes of cardio. I'll do 40. I'll get up at four in the morning. Yeah. He's always like, rest, put your legs up, chill, take a deep breath, go spend time with your family, go, you know, go hang out with your daughter, do this. And it's like, yep, I have sections and I'm such a structured person and it's just worked for me in my life. And so I'm very much one of those boom, 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 boom guys. Yeah. It's interesting with the leg thing. I, I've been having guys pull out leg training towards the end of prep too. And it does seem to tighten things up. I, 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 I I'm, you know, it's probably water retention from the trauma that you're doing from leg training. It would yes. be my guess. Um, but it, it, it does seem to uh, make a difference when, when you um, pull the yeah, leg training you, out at the end. That inflammation, you go to the bike for a little bit too. I get a crazy pump when I do the recumbent bike for cardio, uh, just insane pump in my quads. I just have a really good connection with my legs, but then you, you know, you put the wear and tear of stair climber, you put a little bit of inflammation on there. You take that off. It tends to flush out. Plus, you start pulling things that are holding water, and it all kind of comes together. But it, it's, well, you, it's a good timing thing. You look at cyclists, man. They have the 10-inch arms and, and 30-inch quads. Just massive quads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's definitely something to, to using the cycle. I, I Anymore, I just walk. I'm old and beat up, man. My knees are all, yeah. all trashed. That's I, this, this morning, same thing in my routine. I get up. I walk 5,000 steps every morning. I get up, have my whole routine. My, my daughter and my wife are still sleeping at the time. I get up, I go out, do my thing. I come back. I do about 20 to 30 minutes of yoga downstairs in my basement. I come upstairs. I grab a black coffee. And by then, my wife and kids are up, and we're getting ready to go to school and camp and get my food ready for the day. Like I said, I own a gym in Hudson. 
I'm about 10 minutes from my gym. So I pack all my food, get all my pre-workouts, post-workout, everything, and head to the gym all day. I train clients all day, and then I train myself and usually go pick my daughter up from school or the camp and uh, come back and just live our life. So you have any plans for a pro show yet, or you thought that far ahead? As far, as far, it'll probably be next year, next fall, or even the following year. I know my lowest that I weighed in, I weighed in at 191, 190 something i believe was our final like weigh in um obviously i i didn't do a ton of carving up you know a lot of people talk about this mass car i just we didn't really believe in it and that's something that you evolve with over time too because i remember my first couple shows it was like get that muffin in and get this and you hear these stories about how you're just blasting yourself to try to carve up and it's the stupidest thing ever and uh so we pulled back and we didn't do a ton of carb up i mean if you're in shape and going into a show ready you don't need to carve up and do this crazy pump up. Your, your, your results are going to speak for themselves, what you've done over the last 15, 20 weeks. Well, whatever you did worked. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we were putting it through and, it, and that was the thing. And we were talking to people in the back and jokingly, you know, I'm very humble, but jokingly people are coming up to me and they're like, well, I guess we're fighting for second place. And I was like, no, you're not. I said, no, you're not. You worked hard. I looked at them and I say, I don't know who these guys are. And I said, no, you're not. You worked hard too. We all bust our ass. Let's go out there and have some fun. I mean, everybody at that level is good. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's varying degrees of good, but I mean, you you can, you can see here, you're, you were definitely clearly a notch in in conditioning above. And I, and I try to be, that's the one thing I've I've kind of always kind of held myself on is I want to, I'm going to out diet you. I'm going to out condition you. I don't like to lose anything. (laughs) Nobody likes to lose anything, but I'm just very competitive in terms of that. And especially with the nutrition and the diet, that's kind of my thing. So it's one of those, I'm going to outsmart you. We're going to figure out a way to do it. And then like you see in those pictures too, I don't bring a ton of size. You know, the biggest I've ever gotten in off season was 240, and I was miserable. I'm five foot six on a good day. That's, that's a lot of weight on, on a five foot six frame. You, we talked about knees and back and all that stuff and the chafing and all that fun stuff we don't need to get into, but it just, you're just lethargic you know i'd sit down for a second and instantly want to fall asleep and somebody like a a crazy burner like me as an ectomorph i'm pushing really high calories i burn anywhere between 38 and 4,000 calories burning a day so i'm very very active so i have to eat that much just to kind of put size yeah you're like me i'm naturally a skinny guy i was like i'm 6'1 and but i was like 165 pounds when i graduated college i was was a 103 pound wrestler (laughs) oh man in high school and it was you know, it was crazy you know what i've seen wrestlers make the best bodybuilders man they know how to suffer i agree 100 percent. because it, it's the work ethic and it's the it's all on you and if you eat this it's your you know you've got these team sports you pass the puck over to someone else now it's their responsibility you can't pass the puck to anybody in bodybuilding you can't pass the football over to somebody in wrestling it's you either you won or you lost and so I feel that that you're 100 percent right. It's mindset when it comes to that. And UFC fighters kind of have the same. Yep. Mentality. UFC fighters. Yep. And I, will say, I will reach out and say mil- a lot of military people kind of have yep. the same thing too. That structure really pushes them forward. Yeah, I've seen so many wrestlers uh, do well in bodybuilding. You know, you also, you know, there's also the fact that you know you probably have a base of muscle build up, but under, under, understand how to cut for weight. You know, I, I wrestled for three years. I was terrible at it, and I switched to basketball because I. <laughs> well, you're six. I'm, you're six one. That's... Yeah, I'm better built for basketball. But I, I just remember how hard I, I remember going from from bat from from wrestling to basketball. And I'm like, damn, this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get to eat what I want. I don't have to weigh in. <laughs> I mean, what the wrestling room's not 120 degrees and uh, running like... stairs. That was one of the ongoing jokes is I was so far under 103 as a wrestler because I was, I'm talking like unhealthy skinny in high school because I just ran around and I never slowed down to eat. So the ongoing joke is I would actually eat a Subway sandwich on the scale in high school (laughs) while we were weighing in. I'd carry my sandwich with me. I was so far underweight. It was, it was ridiculous, but I'm a big foodie and it just got to the point that after senior year, of wrestling i was like i'm done being the little guy i'm like i'm done i want i want to get bigger and i know that whatever i pick and choose i'm gonna do i'm gonna excel in it and it was just time to evolve from that little boy and time to grow up a little bit so that's when you started your bodybuilding journey 
Yep. I would want, I want to say 16 years old was the first time I went to my first bodybuilding show. And it was with my sister's boyfriend at the time. He was a bodybuilder and he won Mr. Minnesota in 2000 or 99 or something like that. And they were dating and I went to their show. And again, I was probably 16 years old. That was it. I seen it. I looked at it. I went, I'm going to do that. And how old are you now? I'm 37. 37. So 20, you know, roughly 20 years of training. That's what I try to get through to these young guys. I get, I get young guys that are reach out to me for coaching and they've got their three year plan to get their pro card. I'm like, buddy, that ain't happening. (laughs) Yeah. That's the biggest question I've been getting too. is, you know, what's this? I say, it's the long game guys. You realize, I hate saying like 16, 18 years because it makes me sound like a grandfather. It makes me sound so old, but I literally did it all in sections. I knew what I want. When I was 103, I looked at it and went, I want to be 120. So I did what I had to do to get to 120. It took me a year or so. Then it was like, okay, I want to get to 140. I put the pieces together and I wanted to get there. And it was a slow progress. And like you just said, it's almost 20 years yep. of figuring it out. And now I would like to say I have a good handle on my body as far as food, nutrition, training, muscle memory, all that stuff. But I'm learning stuff every day too. And I'm learning how my body reacts to certain foods and certain foods that we discussed earlier that I, you just can't eat anymore. Yep. Your digestive tract just won't do it anymore. And it, you just, you, you roll with the punches, but you have to be patient. It is, it's this YouTube and the social media with these young kids and watching these kids like, I'm just going to take all this trend and I'm just going to do all this and I'm going to do an hour of cardio. And I'm just going to be jacked on my mind. I'm getting my pro card in like 14 minutes. You, you know, what's funny, man. I, I, I talk about it all the time. I've talked about it with Justin, but you see young guys, young guys are super focused on the PEDs and like you're backstage at a national show talking to or or even pros you're talking to pros it's all about diet it's like what's your diet look like what are you eating you know how much food are you eating what what kind of food are you eating it's 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 what's your training like yep. it's funny because you realize there's only like a handful of peds that you can take and then and then the rest of it's just your work it's work ethic and food and and that's the worst part is now this generation leads with peds they don't lead with <clears throat> um, their workout plan. They don't work. They don't lead with their diet plan. They don't talk about their cardio. They don't talk about, uh, I call it go muscles or show muscles. You have your go muscles, which is everything inside that we don't see. We got to, you got to take care of those. And then you have your show muscles, which is what we go on stage and flex and look at my back and look at my arms. You got to take care of your go muscles for your show muscles to even be there. I like that. Go muscles and show muscles. That's funny. Sure. I only sure. have show muscles, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. And how old are you? I'm almost 50. All right. Old man. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be yeah. 50 soon. Nice. But well, you're still doing it. I still see all your posts and watch your, I mean, you still, you love it, man. And I, I love following you because you're, you're just like me in terms of that. You post your high carb days, you post some fun, fun days of high carbs where you've got gummy bears in there that gets people questioning what the hell is he eating gummy bears for you're, you're low. It's just, it's awesome to see that stuff. And that's why I follow people like you. And I'm glad we got in contact. It's funny. I'll put, I'll put that up. And that's literally like the only candy I've had the whole week is just that one serving of gummy bears. And then they get, and they go, how can you look like that and eat that? (laughs) You you have any idea? It's the science behind it. You have no idea. So but that's what yeah. when I'm bringing up clients' plans. Same thing is I'm not going to push them in the deep end of the pool. We're going to start in through the shallow end, and we're going to walk in through your diet and work out and get them comfortable. And I'll put some fun, comfortable food on there. Wow, I, I didn't know that I could eat this on a diet. I said, stop saying you're on a diet. We're trying to change your lifestyle. Like right. a, diet, a diet to me ends. Like you can't just say I'm on a diet. Have I been on a diet for 30 years then? No, it's more of my lifestyle. So. Yeah, I heard Jay Cutler, uh, it was recently on a podcast talking about changing your relationship with food. Like he said, eating for fuel versus fun. It's a, very, it's, a, it's a very different relationship. 100%. And that's, and that's kind of the, the switch that I turn on when prep starts. It's, it doesn't matter what anything tastes like. Everything that enters your mouth is for a purpose. Yep. And I, I tell all my clients, I say, within four weeks of our show, whatever you put in your mouth will be seen on stage. If you sneak into the closet, eat an Oreo, we're going to find that on stage four weeks out when you took third. Like, stop doing that. Have that discipline. Have have that structure that you committed to something. Prove that you can do it. I mean, you cheating on a diet and not telling your coach and you cheating on stuff only makes you look horrible. You know, yep. you paid us to do this. It's one of those things that just commit to it. Let's get it done. If you were, if you were in the category of first and you walked in and you knew that you had it, let's do it. 
If not, there's nothing wrong with fifth place. I mean, you you know, you coach people. I can always tell when they're not <laughs> they're not compliant. I, I can I look at the pictures and I'm like, I'm like, this math ain't adding up, man. And then they just lie and lie and lie to you. And yep. again, another one of those things I say, lie to your husband, lie to your wife, lie to your boyfriend, lie to your girlfriend. Don't lie to your trainer. We're trying to help you. Yeah, you're only cheating yourself. I, 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 that's what I tell people. I'm like, if you're not telling me what's going on, I can't make adjustments in intelligent decisions about where, where you'll be. You're only, you're only hurting yourself. Yeah. And just and, to, to touch base on that with a client that just checked in with me this morning, I had her literally list everything she's put in her mouth. She just got done with a show, so we're reversing. And she's putting it on a little bit too fast, like almost everybody does on a reverse. And so I got to slow her down a little bit. But I wanted her to bullet point everything she's been eating off of the plan so then she can read it. She sent me a whole page. And she goes, I didn't realize I didn't realize it was that much. And I said, but that's why I wanted you to take 15, 20 minutes and write it all down. Because now you look at it and you go, holy shit, that really does add up. And now I wonder why I'm six pounds heavier than what I should be right now. And so it was great to have her see that because she writes back to me and says, thank you so much for making opening my eyes to this. I didn't realize when you grab something here or there, it really adds up over time. I've been taking a different approach with people post show. And this is something I picked up from Justin Harris, but I don't really do the all. Well, it depends on the situation, but most of the time I don't do reverse diets anymore. I just come straight at it with food with people, but make filling them up with good food. Yes. Because I, it's just like, I think nine, 90% of people just don't have the discipline not to eat shit. So I would, I would rather them be eating chicken and rice than going out and hammering a pizza and ice cream. Yeah. I, I, I tell them, you know, Saturday night after the show, go do your thing. Go yeah. have your cheat meal, do your thing. Sunday, you're going to go out to brunch or breakfast or something. But Monday, we get right back on it. And you try to balance things out a little bit more. But you're right. They don't have the discipline. They felt like they've been caged up, like they've been in jail. And then the show's over and they're free. And they just, everything's off. Next thing you know, they're starting to drink alcohol again. They're starting to just pile on the gluten. They're throwing in dairy. All that stuff starts just piling in. Your digestive system has no clue what's going on. And you're just stuck and you're miserable. Then you're not pooping for about three days either. It's, yeah. it's a rough, rough couple steps if you don't do them right. Yeah, not only that, you can completely ruin your off season in a couple of weeks. Like if you have this rapid fat gain, you're screwed, man. You're going to have to do a mini cut like six weeks after your show. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. just get yourself revved up again to eat more food again and then try to mentally say, well, I did it. I just did this three weeks ago. Can I surpass what I or am I going to hit that wall again? And so, yeah, I mean, so I, I don't know. I try to be really I, I take a different approach to the post show. Like I'll keep people on a baseline of PEDs like I don't pull all the drugs out and I'll slowly taper down the cardio yeah. and the fat burners after a show and then I'll throw good food at them. And that's try perfect. to rebound. That's yeah. and that's that's and essentially what I did too. That I pulled down my cardio a little bit. Like I said, I was doing twenty thousand steps a day. I know it sounds crazy. I I still try to get fifteen. So I still get fifteen thousand steps. I still do sauna post workout. What the way that I like to do it? I still do my post workout cardio. I just bring it down a little bit, but my food's bumping up. We're getting in more more hormone based foods and more fruits and vegetables and getting yeah. fat pushed back in. That's one thing I've never been a big fat connoisseur. I don't lift my fats up. I'm not big on pushing fats. I don't either. And don't either. it works good for me. I keep the fats low too, man. And but I'm, now I'll I, slowly get them in a little bit. And you can tell. I mean, you can just, you can tell. Your central nervous system wakes up. Your hormones wake up. You uh, uh, you got a little bit more pep in your step, if you know what I'm saying, when it comes to yep. the sexual side of it. Because when you're prepping, that's more than like. <laughs> Dude, I... I I, I get so many clients reach out to me like, bro, what's going on? I I I don't want I don't want to I don't want to have sex, and I'm I'm like, I'm like just I, I just tell people up front, man, just tell your wife the last four weeks it's 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 shut down for business. Yeah, yeah I'm not I'm not <laughs> cheating on you. I swear I still love you. You're beautiful. <laughs> just please hang in. I, I I'm blessed to have the best wife in the world. I really am. She's my best friend. I married my best friend. She understands this. Um, I actually coached her for four shows. Of course, you know how that always works. And uh, we got married last year. We've been together for about five years. But I'm, I'm extremely awesome. blessed because she is she understands everything that comes with the bad side of this, which is the, the hangry and the, the attitude. And the you know, <laughs> I always make the joke. It's the Snickers commercial. It's a Snickers commercial because yeah. we're always crabby when they're eating a Snicker bar. But you're crabby because you're hungry and you got to understand you made that choice to commit to it. Don't take it out on your kids. Don't take it out on your wife or your family. 
you did this. So take responsibility for your actions. But but I still have my moments. <laughs> and uh, I'm blessed to have her because she puts up with more than she should. My girlfriend's a non-bodybuilder, man. My first show I, the, the, that she was with me prepping for, I think she was like, what the fuck did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> I still say it all the time. I'm like, Hon, you can so go get a better guy than me. <laughs> but she's she- like, She's like, can't we go out to dinner? Can't you have a drink? I'm like, nope. Yep. <laughs> Not doing and any I, of that. Yeah, I was. Uh, so I have a nine year old daughter uh, with a, a previous girlfriend, and it was kind of the same thing. We were very much opposites. She was the partier, the drinker, the the go out attention person, and as a bodybuilder, you, that's kind of a no no. You know, you, you do it to an extent, but when you really get down there and prep, you don't want to go out in public. You don't want to surround yourself in an atmosphere with snacks and nope. food around. You you know how it is. You you yep. set your base. And you kind of have your 16 or however many weeks planned out because you know how you're going to feel at certain stages. And that's another thing, too, is I like to, and with AJ, we bring ourselves in two weeks pretty much ready. So two weeks from, excuse me, uh, two weeks out from the show, we like to almost be ready. So then yep, you can critique and you can, yep, you could throw a couple things in and out of there. You still there? Sorry. Something yeah, I'm here. There we go. Um, sorry about that. Uh, just throw a couple things in there. And again, we don't throw surprise foods. We get the gut going and digesting on track the way that we want it. And all we do is we lift it up or bring it down, lift it up and bring it down, which is perfect because he's the one, again, telling me to go get my cheat meals, go take it, go take it. And I'm like, I don't want to, like, I know yeah. how my stomach's going to feel. So then I'll just switch everything, figure out the whole macros and I'll load up what, which would be a cheat meal, but I'll eat it clean. And I like my food diverse. So I'll have my, sourdough toast with some cream of rice, a big bowl of 96, four beef, you know, or whatever I'm doing, which when he says, go out and have a burger and fries or a piece of cake or something like that, it just doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. So, I'm the same way, man. I don't like Justin will build in cheat meals on contest prep. And I, I'll tell you most of the time I just make my own at home, you know, rather than get, like going out to like five guys and getting the greasy, well, I'll make my we own. Them, and we all do that. And I go do that too. Because who doesn't love five guys? It's, it's amazing every time you get it. But yeah, I'll do it once in a while, but I, I usually just make my own cheat meals. Like I'll just make my own burger and fries at home and get a leaner cut of beef and yep, make my own exactly. sweet potato fries oh, and I, do them in the air fryer I, and shit. Yeah, my own olive I, oil. That, that's how I do it. I, I just like we talked about it before. Like I, I think as you get older, you start having more and more. You, I mean, you're still young, but like, like my gut got even. It's like as soon as I hit my mid thirties, it was like stuff I could do when I was younger. I couldn't do anymore. Yeah, I'm starting to, to realize that. You know, I get people asking me about training and about diet and about conditioning and what did what did you do when you were 18 compared to 37? And again, my head has always loved this. I've, I've ate, breathed, and sleep this business since I've known about it. I just love it. I love the process of it all. I, I just knew this is what I wanted to do for a living. But it's it's at that point too where you just you you graduate off of it and go. I was just having this conversation on my podcast about somebody asking me about heavy squats and heavy deadlifts. I don't do heavy heavy back squats anymore. My lower I don't back do them at all either. You know, I, I'll do belt squats, I'll do scoop squats, I'll do hack squats. But again, even then, I'm not I'm not blasting out five six hundred pounds anymore. You know, I, I'm a little bit more smart with my joints. I'm understanding things a little bit more. I'm understanding how to feel more contractions instead of just going from point A to point B on your joint, feel the tissues coming in on the eccentric and concentric and just actually just shutting down your brain a little bit more as a hyperactive trainer and a, a, a client myself, i go, 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 go. And that's the worst thing you can do in the gym. I make the joke that I put the garbage cans next to the door at my gym, because when you walk in, throw your brain in the garbage, let us take over. It's not your job to think anymore. This is what you pay us for. Let us help you. And so I kind of, I had to do the one-on-one to myself about that too, to be like, dude, you were so hyperactive. Slow down, slow down, really think about things. And I'll tell you, I've had tendonitis for 20 years. My left elbow is is shot. My tie-ins are all messed up on my left side. I have, I can't curl with a straight bar. I've never curled with a straight bar in years because of the impingements I have. And so you make it work. And I'll tell you this, after I've slowed down and and wasn't that guy trying to impress your girlfriend and boyfriend with the 50, 60, 70 pound curls, you slow down and really feel contractions. I've gotten the best results I've ever gotten. Yeah, I I learned that lesson the hard way. I was more of like in my 20s, I would say more of a power 
builder, you know, it was like, like, I wasn't sure if I was a power lifter. I wasn't sure if I was a bodybuilder, <laughs> which, which I see a lot of guys do, but I, and this is something I tell all young guys, like, uh, and you have to think about it. with, with powerlifting, your job is to get the weight from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. It's the exact opposite in bodybuilding. Yeah. We're trying to place as much load on the muscle as possible with, with the least amount of weight, right? You know, so you're trying to maximize contraction, minimize risk for injury. Um, so you know, it, it's, it's an exact opposite way of training. Yep. I sell again, another one of my lines is I say, we're not athletes as bodybuilders. We're athletic mannequins. That's we're not going to be. We're not going to be able to run a forty-yard dash. We're going to blow our hamstrings. We're not going to be able to go out and play football. We're athletic mannequins at that point. We are building ourselves to look like a sculpture. That is what bodybuilding is. And so, huh. at, at that point, you know, so you think about that. We're not athletes. We're athletic mannequins because we are working, like we talked about before, show muscles. Yep. You, know, you you train for football, you train for go muscles. Nobody cares what you look like. It's about point A to point B, making that tackle, how right. fast can you do it. In our sport, it's the longevity. It's understanding, okay, I need to build up my back. It's going to take me three years. That sounds crazy. Nobody wants to take three years to build up a no. body part, but guess what? That's what it's going to take if you really want to excel in this sport. And you get older in training, too. You, you start becoming more and more aware of this. I, I see, like, like, I know a lot of guys get – young guys get obsessed with like hardcore style, you know, Dorian Yates style training. But um, if you want to progress and keep going into your forties and fifties, man, you have to be really, really smart about it. Like I, I, I'll sit and like, literally I'll do a cost versus benefit analysis, like something like deadlifts. I look at how much, one, how much fatigue for me is almost 50 year old guy. Uh, it takes to do, I, I, I was a pretty decent deadlifter, but like how much fatigue, it takes to do a deadlift. And like, if I blow myself out on a set of heavy deadlifts, I'm not going to be, you know, the rest of my back workout, I'm not going to be able to go that hard yeah, with things. Say. I've emptied the gas tank out. And then the, the potential at that point, your central nervous system is, is whacked. Yeah. And now you've got to go for another hour. Yeah. And recovery, you know, taxing recovery, you know, recovery is like a bank account. You, there's only so much you can take out. And um, also the injury risk, you know, like with me, it's, staying in the gym is just as important <laughs> as anything. Yeah. So if I hurt myself and I can't train for three weeks, you're whereas if I, how available you are. Yep. Well, I agree a hundred percent. Again, with deadlifting, I love it. You know, we're guys, we like to get it going and get, get under a couple of, you know, you do 225 a couple of times, warm up 315. You start, you start flirting with it a little bit. Your pre-workout kicks in, you're getting rolling and you start getting up there at 405. You want to start pulling five and you're like, mm, how's my back going to feel in the next week? It's yep. just not worth it. And so I think about that a lot with back squats, just actual straight bar back squats. You know, the, uh, squatting, it will never go away. It's absolutely amazing. But at the same time, structurally and, and the fatigue I have on my body, you got to find certain pieces of equipment right. that can accommodate for your injuries. It's funny, you, you like the whole squat thing, like you, you take a look at it, like uh, power lifters, like guys that are huge squatters, usually don't, their quads aren't that big. No. They, they have big big asses big hips yeah. you know you they're know. just i mean they're exploding from point a to point b they're they're not, it's not about using the muscle in between it's about getting from point a to point b and you you see them just muffin popping and you see them just crushing this food before and it's just like they're for one purpose like you said I, again i have all these jokes with my powerlifting friends um because they always say god you have to diet and you you they call us pretty boys you, know, you bodybuilders <laughs> are pretty boys and i said you, you know what I want to look the way that I want to look year round. I said, but if a car falls on me, I'll call you. Because yeah. <laughs> you can pick that car off of me. But in the meantime, until a car falls on me, I want to try to look good. <laughs> that's I, friend, you know, I say, I say power lifters, they're not exactly the most aesthetically pleasing looking when it comes to our sport, you know, but again, they're just all about picking up weight. One of my buddies, that's a bodybuilder. He said, I want to look like I lift weights. <laughs> <laughs> right? A good friend of mine says the same thing. He goes, you look like you're really strong, but you're really weak. I want to look <laughs> like I can actually lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I've I've completely reinvented my training as I've gotten older. I, I've, I've progressed. I do think there is a time to build a strength base when you're young. Um, it, it, but if you're going to get serious about bodybuilding, it, it's funny, like bodybuilders are the – and this is something I talk about all the time. Like, like 
power lifters have very specific ways of training. Like they periodize their training. They understand what their goals are. They know how to maximize their lifts. And like most bodybuilders just have no clue. They just come in and do what the fuck ever. They will. I, I, again, kids in a candy store. Sometimes you're just a kid in a candy store. You walk into a gym or if it's a new gym and you're just like, I want to try. I want to train on all this. This is just so fun. And next thing you know, you're hypertrophy training for two hours and you just got a pump, but nothing happened. You know, in your mind, you're like, yeah, that was great. So it is one of those things to ch- to go in and, and, and have a structured form plan of what you're doing because it's so easy to want to go, ooh, look at that toy. Ooh, look at that toy. Yeah. And next thing you know, you've done 17 pieces of equipment. And you're like, what did I do today? Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll ask guys all the time. I'm like, are you a power lifter? Are you a crossfitter? Are you training for, I mean, what are you training for, man? <laughs> we're, if you're going to be a bodybuilder, you got to train like a bodybuilder. If you're a crossfitter, we just, we're not even going to talk to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other story a my, <laughs> my gym it's hilarious it's mostly a bodybuilding gym but they have like a little section quarantined off for the crossfitters over in a corner we laugh about it because it's like over over in its own area where it's not bothering anybody else uh-huh. yeah i just uh, i just prepped a girl uh for a figure show i want to say six weeks ago she won the overall she crushed it she looked amazing her work but again her work eth- i knew we were going to the work ethic was there the drive and determination while we were just having a meeting, I knew it was there. You can, you know, you can tell right away. Yeah. Certain people. Um, but she was a big CrossFitter and she loved it. And I was like, you know, it's fine. Well, she goes, can I still do CrossFit while I'm doing this? I said, up to a point, you know, when we get six weeks out, I don't, I, I don't want to risk injury. You got to understand I'm going to manipulate your diet a lot. And again, she's natural too. So, um, so we didn't play that side of the game and we're coming in and she's like, I want to do a, a CrossFit meet and da, da, da. And it was like four weeks out. And she wanted to do a CrossFit meet. And I said, Angie, if you're capable of doing this full energy wise and you feel okay, go for it. Because this is what her life was before deciding to commit to a show. And she went in and I was surprised. She did really well. It was awesome. Her calories were not, it's four weeks out. You know, calories are not really there. She was fully functional. She loved it. It was great. Then she went through, we won our show. She, she loved it. She writes to me and goes, oh man, I can't do both. Can I? And I was like, no, you're going to start contradicting yourself. Not if you want to be good, at, great at one of them. And she ended up staying doing her CrossFit stuff right now, kind of doing the off season, whatever. Um, but she trains at my gym. And, and yesterday her husband came up to me and she goes, yeah, she's already talking about dumping CrossFit and wanting to do more. And I'm like, yeah, it's, it's an addiction too. You know, as CrossFit's an addiction, it's a different part of her life. You know, she's at that point now where I don't want to do these terrible, terrible pull-ups. I'm going to sit here and rip on CrossFit. And, and do all this joint impactful, terrible movements that are fully functional for injuring yourself um, to wanting to work on her look and her health and her nutrition. And it really opened her eyes to the nutrition side. They don't do a lot of that nutrition side. No. Of she told me anyway with CrossFit stuff. I mean, it's training for a different purpose. I tell people this all the time. I'm like, if you're, if you want to be great at something, you have to you have to go full in on, 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 on that thing. Like if you're, if you're trying to be an NFL player, but you're training for soccer, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> and you want to get better at something. You have to practice it. You want to yeah. get better at bench, bench more. You want a bigger back, train your back more. Like, like what we discussed, that was a weaker point for me was my back. It's always been a weaker point in my, in my previous shows. And I took three years off between these shows because I knew I need, is my back where I want it to be? No. It can always be bigger. I, you can always be better. But I would like to say that it wasn't one of my weak points. You know, to, to save my life, I couldn't do a lat spread. I just thought to myself, hey, maybe I'm just the one human being that doesn't have lats. <laughs> and it, it, it wasn't. It was I was undereducated and I wasn't eating and training proper for it. And then well, I your, sw- your back is great now. You have a very balanced physique. I don't I don't nothing nothing's out of uh out of whack. I don't I don't think. I appreciate it. Um, the symmetry Ooh. symmetry is is huge for me. Yeah, you're very symmetrical. I, when you uh, for pro, are you going to do two twelve or are you going to go to classic in in the pro? Yeah, I know that we had that talk, and I would rather do two twelve. I don't, I don't, you know, I just I don't want to do classic. I don't know. I get a lot of people I, saying you have the classic look, you could pull it off, and they, they just bunk classic. away classes. Yeah, they didn't have classic physique when I was coming up and doing this stuff. You know, this is all kind of newer, and I don't, I don't feel like jumping ship. I, I, I know, the, man. It's it's funny. The older guys are like, I'm a bodybuilder. Yes, it, it is. It's that old school mentality. You know, I was at my weigh-ins out there, and the guy was like, man, you've got that grainy old school conditioning. 
And he was like, you are going to do awesome. And it was just cool to talk to someone like that. Yeah. Like, the Dorian Yates days, the, you know, that those days of, of how they trained, you don't hear or see a lot of it anymore because it's, it's spoofy camera pictures and videos. And we all do it. I do it too. It's part of business and, and what you do, but it's the mindset just it, at the early nineties was the golden era of training. You know, and I, like I said, I'm only 37 years old, but the work ethic and the drive and the passion just isn't what it used to be for bodybuilding. Yeah. I mean, there's a, it seems to be, there is a good crop of young guys coming up right now. There's definitely some, some oh, neat. Diving in the rock for sure. There's yeah. a, lot, a lot of, a lot of guys coming up that are awesome to follow and watch. I mean, I, 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 it seems like Nick Walker, it seems like he's a grinder he seems like a guy that works hard. Yes. Um, I really like Samson Dowda too. That guy's is pretty, pretty holy crap dude i met him at the new york pro that is the biggest human being i've ever seen in person unbelievable he's huge one i, I, got, I, I got an olympia story so i've been going to the olympia for it's got to be close to 20 years too i have been going every year every year i mean this is what i love to do and i just remember when ian because obviously everybody knows ian now yeah but nobody knew ian when he first did the Olympia. And I remember the line out for Dexter and the line out for Phil. And there was this big abominable looking snowman guy, the widest human being I've ever seen in my life sitting at a table and nobody was up at his booth because nobody knows who he is. I walk, I go over to my wife and I go, I got to go talk to this guy. I said, he is the widest human being I've ever seen. I love <laughs> and I walked up and it was Ian. And again, at the time, nobody knows who he is. He throws me a pre-workout that he must have made, you know, back in when he was starting up and he said, hi, I'm Ian. Da, da, da. He was just kind of to himself. And I just said, I want to tell you, you have the broadest back and, and awesome shoulders, man. You look phenomenal. I'm like, you're going to you're going to you're going to stir some stuff up. And he didn't do too well that Olympia, whatever. But it was awesome to be able to say that I talked to him and, and we shot the shit for a little bit because he didn't have that clout or that hype yet. Nobody really knew who he was. He was just getting on the scene. And so it was it was just awesome to be able to connect like that. But I did the same thing. I'm like, this guy is as wide as he's the widest human being I've ever seen. And he's I've been more excited and jealous at the same time to go talk to him. So, yeah, he's a big dude. I, I remember seeing him and uh, Chris Bumstead at an event and everybody was swarming Bumstead. And I, I said hi to Ian and I'm like, and he's like, he's like, I said, nobody's talking to you. And he's like, dude, it's like this everywhere I go with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you kind of, you got it. You got the, <laughs> the guy that's the most popular guy in bodybuilding right now, obviously. Yeah. And that Ian is Ian's just awesome. I love watching his videos because he's just he's just tells it how it is. He's very dry about it. And he's just like and my, my wife's obsessed with his wife, so he follows her on Instagram and all this. They talk on Instagram, just it's awesome. He's he's hilarious, dude. He uh I see him like he'll do his Instagram Q and A's and people ask him questions all the time and like seventy five percent of the time his response is don't be a pussy. Yep. Or just <laughs> no. He did the like raw this episode of like raw firing like spitfire questions and be yeah. like, like what did what do you think about or do you have gross feet how are your toenails he's like why are you guys asking me this shit like, <laughs> people ask the dumbest stuff you know I I get as you know like as a bodybuilder and as a male to the messages you get from people are just asinine it's oh my like, god I get blown it, up all day long man it's so dumb and, and you, I get and, some. I meet some nice people too, but absolutely. And, and I try to be as organic as I can. And I write back to everybody that writes to me. I'm very much one of those guys because when I was a kid and if I had the access that I had to try to talk to some of those people that you look up to, it would have been a dream to me. And I never had that. So if anybody reaches out to me, I don't care how old you are or who you are and how rich you are or poor you are. I try to make a point to write to you. And stay connected. Yeah, I do. I do too. I mean, there, there's sometimes I get overwhelmed with messages, like, uh, but I, I, yeah. I try to be nice to everybody. I'm not. I mean, I'm not like, I'm just some Instagram and YouTube celebrity. But um, it's I, I try not to be a dick, basically. Yeah. And I'm very humble about everything, and that's why when people said you're gonna change your name to IFBB Pro on Instagram, that's the first thing some people do, and it's like it's like they run to their phone to do it. And it's like, sure for marketing, I guess maybe I'll do it in the future but it wasn't it's like you know what i did i went to bed i woke up i went to work the next day i'm very blue collar when it comes to working i'm from yeah, but, that's just how i am i get up and i go so yeah life's I, still the same right <laughs> still the same. I, you know i always i always joke with my daughter because she always says dad you're gonna bring me home another trophy you're gonna bring me home another medal so whenever i have a trophy or a medal i bring it home to my daughter and she, she's got a pile of them in her room and it's just, <laughs> that's cool man that's really that's cool. cool because that's 
and she's not even into this really. You know, I tried to get her into working out and stuff and it's not, she's in gymnastics and, and hockey and things like that, but she watches dad work out and I just, it just doesn't, I've never seen her have the passion to want to do it. And I try not to push it on her because she's nine. She can do whatever she wants. Hoping that day comes where she's like, hey, dad, I want to do something. But in the meantime, it's just, I just try to set myself as an example for her. You know? Yeah, it's I, the I, same I way with it. me. Yeah. The example you want to set is the hard work. You know, whatever sure. it is, whatever it is that they want to do, just work hard at it. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's backfired on me. She has told me, and I know this, this, this was the worst day of my life. I'm not going to lie. When my daughter said that she didn't want me to come pick her up from school anymore because I don't look like all the other dads because I have <laughs> muscles, because I have muscles and tattoos. So she was asking if her mom could just pick her up from school. instead of me. And my daughter. Said, yeah, that sunk. That sunk my heart because I'm, I, I had the conversation with her. I said, dad works really hard to look the way that I look. I'm a little different than them, bud, but, and it's just, this is, you know, so as I'm trying to build what I love and the passion, I have the one love of my life, which is my daughter telling me that she doesn't want me around her because of the way I look, that one kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I had to say, well, my daughter, she'll get a little embarrassed. Like she plays volleyball, but like all the kids are coming up, to, like, to, like, they're like looking at me and they're like asking her questions about me. And I think it's, it's the attention she gets, you know, yeah. she's crying. She doesn't know what the, my wife kind of talked me off the edge with that one. And, because like I said, it kind of that one kind of stung. That one, that was the first parent <laughs> and that I've something that I've loved and, and I had put so much passion into, and then told that, hey, we don't like the way that you look about that. It's like, ugh. Doesn't matter how cool your dad is, you're still dad. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It has, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the classic, you know, she won't give you a hug or kiss when she's around her friends, you know. Like, I do we, that all, we all have we all have that, man. All right, dude, I got to wrap this up, man. I appreciate you coming on. It was great, great talking to you. Uh, do you uh, um, have anything you want to plug, your coaching, uh, promo? Um, yeah, I mean, I could plug a couple things. Uh, my Instagram is uh, at SPT Chris Bafford. Always appreciate all the followers on there. Uh, I also run a podcast. It's just kind of up and coming. It's called The Bargument. Uh, it kind of, we just shoot the shit like this too. We'll go on certain topics and, and throw things around. Uh, Body by SBT is a website for my personal training business. And then I also own a gym. Like I said, that's mhfhudson.com to check out gym stuff. But I appreciate your time and letting me come on here, man. It means a lot. Yeah. And folks, I'll put all this in the video description below. Uh, so you can check out Chris and thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.